I feel like they're staring at me. Uh, I don't know. So, this is the T400 I made in a live stream a little bit ago, and I originally made a kind of interesting boot splash screen that just says uh, Linux 96 or Debian GNU Linux 96. And I kind of uh, decided I wanted to go with something that had a little bit more of a uh, 90s Windows Manager look. Uh, I tried Flexbox and a few other things. Uh, also, by the way, this is a Plymouth theme I made by modding some basic stuff with the Chicago 95 Plymouth theme. And if you don't know, Plymouth is typically used just to show a logo or a loading bar instead of a wall of text, which, uh, I don't know, I thought scan lines was kind of appropriate for this. So, it's set to automatically log in, and from there, it's going to load i3WM, but with Chicago 95 GTK themes and colors. And, in fact, I think it actually looks quite good. It kind of has this, uh, I guess, 90s feel. And, oh, wait a second. Okay, another second. Yeah, I, I put in a boot uh, noise. So, anyways, though, I think it looks rather good. And I guess I'm going to go talk about some of the specifics and show you a little bit around the system. Okay, let's talk about the system for a little bit. And I guess the first thing we should talk about is the system specs. So, I'm just going to run screen fetch right here and or neo fetch in this case and let's see what it pulls up so it's debian sid um it's been up for about an hour and a half 1280 by 800 resolution uh it could be better on that uh at four gigs of ram and i guess finally a spinning rust drive aka a mechanical hard disk so I guess let's move on to the next thing. So, okay, so let's talk about the next thing, which is, I guess, how the actual GTK Chicago 95 thing looks. So, right here, I'm just gonna start a Pavu control, because I don't use a lot of GTK programs, but this one does show what pretty much the font base and style of the GTK theme looks like. I don't think it's a perfect replica, but it, uh, you know, does seem to at least appear to be like an older, maybe, maybe not Windows system, but it at least looks like a 90s sort of uh, setup. And I do kind of like the font out of everything here. And some stuff actually looks quite accurate, but others just seem a little bit off. I don't know, I didn't go with the entire Chicago 95 theme, of course, but... I did use quite a bit from it, so... Okay, so let's see what you actually have to do to set this up with your i3 config. So we're just going to take a look at dot config slash i3 slash config. And I guess the first thing we probably should look at is the actual coloring. Um, this kind of creates, like, or at least changes the color on the windows. And I just have two, one for like a focused client and one for unfocused. The colors were inside the Chicago 95 theme. I think I did slightly edit it to make the blue a little bit brighter. Uh, and of course, play startup music, exact MPV. And that'll pretty much give us our nice little uh, startup sound and okay, set the font. I chose less perfect DOS VGA because it seems to scale a little bit better. Um, down here, we're probably going to get to the status bar in a little bit. And that essentially is just going to like set the 
colors for the status bar, but most of this is just kind of stock uh, i3 config that's auto-generated. But if you look at the bar, that's essentially just going to, well, change the little bar at the bottom and background and status line. So, um, what else do we got here? If we go down a little bit farther, or farther up, we'll find the D menu command, where for that you kind of have to, there isn't a config file, you just kind of put in everything for options, font, fn, nb, slash f, sf, and nf, just change the colors to kind of match the rest of setup there. Uh, I don't think that's the best way to do it, but hey, it works. So, I guess um, that's about it. And if you're unfamiliar with i3, um, it D-Menu, you don't necessarily have to use it with i3, but it's typically included within the same package. Of course, this is going to vary based off what distribution of GNU slash Linux you have, but it does uh, create a nice little start menu and it can be used for other things. I think Luke Smith used it for some sort of uh, mounting key combo situation, but uh... Okay, so let's get into the Plymouth theme. So, Plymouth uh, pretty much just creates like a little boot logo for you. I decided to modify the Chicago 95 uh, boot screen, which was actually quite easy because it just cycles through images and has a quit image, which I just selected one of the random uh, plasma ingredients that have lines drawn on them. And I did that with a little uh, script and some C++ programming. But it does kind of look like C. I'm, it might actually be C code. <laughs> I mean, it does look exactly like it, so... Uh, I will say though, it, I just modified the images and a few of the things like called script, and this is what it kind of looks like, I guess. So... Um, there wasn't too much actually changed there, and I think it ended up looking kind of well, so... Anyways, uh, I guess that sums up most of the stuff. Uh, let's see if there's anything we uh, missed here. Oh, yeah, configuring uh, GTK. So, there are two configuration files, one for GTK 2.0 and GTK 3, but if you type in ls slash a, you can see the GTK K2 uh, configuration file, and I just changed the theme name, font name, pretty much everything there to Chicago 95. And I guess uh, let's get into the GTK 3.0 file, which is settings INI, and again, as you can see, it's Chicago 95, icon theme, Chicago 95, everything like that. And so, you know, you do have to. Uh, actually put that information inside the correct folders, but uh, everything's pre-included inside the Chicago 95 sort of uh, font file. So let's uh, take a quick look at that. Uh, let's go to, I guess, the fonts folder. So Okay, so let's take a quick look at that. First off, um, I have to go to the Chicago 95 folder. This isn't actually where it's installed. I have to, I think I had to copy them over to dot fonts, but I mean, you just copy those two files and you got that classic, although doesn't scale well, Windows 95 style front from Chicago 95. So anyways, have a good one and peace. Hey, I forgot about something, and that is advertisement slash raffle time. Uh, if you're wondering what the raffle is, it's for the T400. And if you want to know what I'm selling, 
I am selling Libreboot at X200s again. They have eight gigabytes of memory and new old batteries or new old stock batteries is what I meant to say. And 240 gigabyte SSDs. And I'll be selling them on renegadecomputing.com. And now that you've finished with my advertisement, by the way, I have two of them. But uh, let's uh, talk about the raffle and rules. So pretty much the rules are just uh, show me somewhere, or, like follow me on Mastodon or something, send me a screenshot, and I will make like some C or C++ program that will randomly figure out who is the winner. So yeah, uh, email me at tripcodeq7 about the raffle contest. And also, um, I don't really want to deal with international shipping, so yeah, I can pay for shipping if it's within the continental United States. Also, the battery on that T400 might be dead, but I will be looking for a newer battery, but it's not guaranteed. Anyways, though, have a good one, YouTube. Bye.